everyone, we have created our menus, they're ready to go. So now let's go ahead and make the animator that will allow these menus to fade in and fade out and do so in a little bit of a dynamic way. So that way they don't just fade in on screen, but we'll have them float into their position. Since all of our pages have the same little structure in their hierarchy here, with their root object and a child called content, we can add an animator to content, and because they share the same name, they can, they can share the same animations. So let's start by selecting the content on our save and load menu and go to the animation pane. If it's not open, go to window and then animation and select animation. And now let's go ahead and create an animation for this content. So let's go to main animations inside of UI and I'm going to do pages. This first page is going to be, well, it's going to be for all of them. So let's start with reveal. Actually, I'm going to use, so let's start with open. This will be the open animation. So I'm going to hit the record button, make sure content is selected, and then I'm going to adjust the position of this rect transform on the screen. So instead of zero or one, I'm going to come outside, I'm going to control, grab it, so I'm going to make sure that the record button is on and that I have content selected, and I'm going to just copy 102, just change that a little bit and paste 102 in there, so I have the original position. And then over on 1, we might change this, I'm going to... I'm going to actually drag this down. No, I'm doing that opposite. I'm going to drag this to one because that's the ending frame since we're opening it. And on zero, I'm going to drag this down. So this menu is going to be down slightly. I'm going to actually hide the main camera right now or the main canvas. So that way I don't have these conflicting images and reselect content. Make sure I've got this ready. All right. So maybe that position. So as we play, what will happen is it will fade in and or float in. So then I'll also grab the canvas group and I'll set the alpha to zero. And at one, I'll set it to one. I'll also make sure that when it's opening that I set interactable and blocks raycast to true. That way we can interact with the things on this panel. Okay, so now let's go ahead and copy this clip. I'm going to actually copy these two values here and paste them at the very end. Okay, so that way it just knows that they're interactable and it should block ray casts from any panels beneath it. Then I'll copy this whole keyframe by selecting the topmost diamond, control C, and let's make a new clip. And this will be opened. So this is in the opened state. And I'll just paste that frame in so that way it's the same, it's visible, and it's in the right spot. Now let's go back to open, and I'm going to copy both of these animations. Copy them both, and let's create a new clip and call this close. Then paste them both in, but change the position of the two keyframes. So I'm going to move the end to the beginning and the beginning to the end at one. And then what we should have is it fades out and drops. And then I'll go ahead and grab the ending keyframe, copy, and create a new clip and call this closed. And closed is going to have that ending position at the very end. Now, one thing that I need to change that I didn't do is I'm going to hit record here. And on closed, I'm going to make sure that interactable and blocks raycasts is false. And make sure that's the same for both the ending frame as well. And then let's go to close. It starts open. I want to change that. So I wanted to make sure that it starts where it's not interactable and then fades out and it is still not interactable. That way when it's disabled, we won't be able to interact with it and it won't be blocking our mouse from interacting with any other pages no matter which one we're on. So let's go to the animator component. And if you don't have that, again, window, animation, and animator. With content selected, we will be inside of the animator that's linked to that object, and we can set up our states. So we will start in perhaps the closed state. So I'll take closed, and I'm going to set the layer default state. 
set open right off to its side and just make a little flow pattern here. So closed will lead to open. Actually, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go from any state. So make transition to close from any state. And I'll do the same thing to open. Now, the way that we'll trigger that is, well, we can either call it by name or we can set a trigger. So you could do animator.play close or animator.play open and it'll work. Or you can set a trigger here, which we can call open and we could call close. So in any state, when I go to close, I'm going to do that. I need my inspector window open. I need my inspector window open right over here. I'm going to make sure that the that the condition is if I'm closing it, I'll go to close and then we will transition to closed at the end. I'll make sure the exit time is set to one and the transition duration is zero. That way it's immediately happening once it ends and I'll make a transition from open to opened and do the same thing. Happens at the very end and there's no transition duration so we won't see a repeating animation. So we will transition to close and close out the screen as long as we have, um, as long as we've called this close trigger. And I'll do the same thing as long as we have called open to reach the open animation. And the transition duration is going to be zero. So now what we can do is we can grab the content of both our config and our help page and we'll add an animator component to them and just drag in the content animator that we made from our save and load menu and it will automatically work with those because they have the same object being animated. Another thing I'll do is I will select all of these pages and by default I'm going to make sure that they are not interactable and they are not blocking raycasts and that their alpha is zero so I'm not seeing anything. And for the root menu, I'm going to set the interactable blocks raycast faults and alpha to zero there as well. So that way my overlay menus are not visible and all I have is the main canvas like we've been working with so far. So we need to build a system that's going to show these panels, but we've just done the animations in this one. So we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you guys then.